My next guests are Dr. Sheikha Houston and Principal Tammy Taylor. They are best-selling contributing authors of Women Who Lead in Education, featuring School Principals, Volume 3, Second Edition. They are also co-founders of Create and Educate LLC, an education and literary firm that offers resources to schools to include professional development and a catalog of culturally relevant book titles for school-aged children from independent authors. The school leaders have 40 years of experience in education between the two of them with experience in charter school startups as well as instituting AVID and Leader in Me as school initiatives. In addition, the duo were recipients of the South Carolina Palmetto Silver Award for academic growth, moved two and three report card levels in one year, won the Palmetto State Arts Education Stream School of Excellence Award and Teacher of the Year. After experiencing a tremendous academic growth, NWEA conducted a case study that is featured on the website. Most recently, Dr. Houston and Principal Tammy Taylor have a new book they are promoting, It Doesn't Have to Be Lonely at the Top, The Power of Collaboration and Leadership that outlines their story of resiliency in their leadership journey. Their weekly Facebook Live series, the REALL Academy, outlines training from their framework. They also host the collaborative first Tuesday of each month, bringing educators, parents, community members, and authors together to solve problems in education. Welcome to the podcast, both of you. Thank you, Dana. Yes, thank you so much. We're excited to be here with you today. Well, um, I'm excited to talk with you both about the work that you've been doing, and we'll start off with... um, just tell me a little bit about uh, being in the trenches um, and working as to turn around as school administrators and how that led to starting your company. Well, Dana, um, when Tammy and I first started our principalship, it was something that we actually were going into together. We, we mm-hmm. started being, becoming principals that first year was our first year as principals. She Mm -hmm. was at the elementary level and I was at the middle school level. And um, we faced some challenges. We are in a um, area where our schools are schools of promise. So um, our report card grading system for the state was actually changing. And um, our state accountability test had changed as well. So being new to the principalship, being new to all of those things um, created, you know, some, some challenges. And where we found ourselves in the, I think, second year was in school improvement status. And um, we really did not have lots of support uh, from our district. We were able to get some great support from people we solicited to in leadership from outside of the district. But um, once we were able to institute some of the things that we were able to speak with, um, with them about, and they helped us with our schools, with, along with our teams, were able to improve. Uh, my school improved two report card grade levels, and Tammy's improved three report card grade levels in one year. But uh, during that time period, we were, you know, really under the fire uh, from our district as to, you know, why we had so much turnover at the schools when research shows that when the principal becomes new to a a school, that that is common. And then when you are putting in new things in place to change your culture, which was needed in both places, you expect turnover. And, um, you know, we were under the fire, we were placed on improvement plans and told basically that if we didn't get things in place, you know, we were going to be back in the classrooms. So it was really a very negative experience. Mm -hmm. And so um, that is what led to us creating our company because without the help of anyone who should have been supporting us, uh, we were able to do what we did with our teams but we wanted to change what that looked like. State sanctioned uh, school improvement status does not have to be a negative experience for leaders. It should be a place where they feel supported and you're 
down in the trenches with them, trying to help them improve the school for the students and the community and the parents. And we didn't have that. So that's what our company was basically founded on, the fact that we, we wanted to bring light to that, but we also don't want anyone else to experience what we experienced because it was just so unnecessary. It really was a time to, for us to reflect on who we are as Black women leading um, schools in what Shika calls promising areas. Um, the challenges were overwhelming, just being mm -hmm. in a situation where you know you are going to be up against um, obstacles that of course you have no control over anyway, but then to add the dynamic of a changing accountability model, a changing um, state system, those things added to that layer of stress on us as the leaders of those buildings. And honestly, as Sheikha was saying, I think that even more of an issue for us was our schools are better than this. Like this isn't who we are. This does not represent who shows up in these buildings every day. We have kids that are absolutely brilliant in our schools. We have teachers who come give it their all and are absolutely outstanding. So when you look at us on paper, you see these very dismal results and you're um, shaking your head because you're thinking, this is not at all who we are. And then couple that with the pressure of, you better get these schools turned around mm -hmm. or um, you're gonna be out of here. The, the motivation wasn't so much with being out of there. That, that is not what fueled mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what we were um, determined at that point to do. Um, and that was to show people who, not just who we are, but who we lead. And mm -hmm. that came with those teams that supported us through that process. Um, but the main thing is the main thing. And, and we just have to go back to there was not that layer of support in existence yeah. for us, um, except for one another. Thankfully, uh, we, we were there to support each other through this ordeal. However, it really, I think, emboldened something in us to say, you know, nobody should have to go through this. Like, what can we do to make this a different reality for people who may find themselves in this situation in the future. When you founded Create and Educate LLC, um, you used uh, your backgrounds of business, banking and real estate. So how did you weave that in to help with, um, you know, school leaders who were lacking support? Um, our backgrounds basically, you know, of course, helps determine who we are as leaders and mm -hmm. the podcast or the um, social media series that we were just on a moment ago. We host every Saturday, the Real Academy that you referenced um, that's based on our framework that we created to help um, leaders navigate state sanctions, school improvement, or either avoid it. We were talking about that this morning. Um, so we, our topic this morning was to answer your question, how to have a strong start to your year. And I went back to my um, real estate days where I was a realtor, my, my background is business. And the one thing we talked about this morning was just that curb appeal. You know, when you're coming into a school, what is the first things that you notice? Make sure that those are on point for your students and your staff and your teachers. And, um, you know, I, I really use my business background in a lot of what I do as a leader, uh, the way that I look at things, the way that I looked at my budget, are we getting a return on investment? So my background really is very much infused into my leadership style. And I'm sure Tammy will state hers as well. Absolutely. Um, Chica, as she said, was in real estate. I was in corporate banking. And when you're looking at the fundamental of a corporate banker, 
the main thing that you really are going to be focusing on are those relationships with the clients that you're serving. So when you take that same ideal of customer service to your leadership, then that becomes the way that you deal with people and the way that you operate in general. And I mean, when I say people, I'm talking about all people, students, staff, parents, there, there's a layer there of respect that is just a given because these are my clients. These are the customers. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I can go into this not just because I um, was raised to be a decent person, I'm going to respect you, but I'm going to respect you through any kind of difficulty, any kind of conflict, anything that might present itself as an obstacle to us getting to the bottom line, which is making sure your child is successful in my school. We bring that to the table. The other thing, um, and Shika mentioned this from a curb appeal um, perspective, but it also is true and indicative of what needs to happen in creating that climate and culture within the school where your employees can thrive and do a good job because that is one of the things that sometimes is missing in education because mm -hmm. people don't come into that setting with the mindset that this is about making sure that people are taken care of, that you have as much as you can, the supports in place that allow them to be at their best every day. And one of the things that I think that, um, as Shika mentioned about the budget, the return on investment is always going to be very important when we're looking at the money that we're spending. Like, is this really getting us what we need? But the return on investment also can be flipped and turned for us to look and see how is this academic needle moving? Like, are these things that we're implementing in our schools really getting us the return that we're looking for? And guess what? If they're not, you have to still be business minded and say, we need to go and figure out what's going to get us the best bang for our book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the collaborative, your online platform, as I mentioned in the bio, it brings educators, parents, and community members together. Um, and you started this um, during uh, the beginning of the pandemic, but you're continuing uh, to use this uh, platform. So talk to me about some upcoming um, uh, themes that you have, and maybe as the podcast episode is released in late September, what you might have planned for late September, early October. Definitely, Dana, thank you. Yes, the collaborative is something that we are very proud of. Um, what we noticed at the start of the pandemic is that there were lots of angst, lots of problems and challenges on both sides for teachers and educators and leaders. And what we also noticed is people were going to social media, they were um, what we call running one another, one, running one another down a little bit um, on social media in a negative fashion. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to, because we are problem solver leaders, we wanted to be able to try to bring people together to say, hey, you know, this is new territory for everyone. This is stressing everyone out. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that it's not easy on either side, but if we come together, and talk about what the problems are and try to solve them for, together and try to look at the perspectives, um, you know, look at it through a different lens, then maybe we can get somewhere. So that's what the collaborative was, um, the premise behind it was. And we brought those parents and educators together and people appreciated it. And several people tuned in and said, wow, thank you all, you know, for doing this because now we understand why teachers are sending you know, X, Y, Z, and now we're kind of giving some background into what can help as parents from just setting up your space at home, that learning environment, and really trying to bring people together to help um, versus, you know, bringing more problems to the forefront. So people found it very helpful and we are continuing it. Um, we have a great series lined up for this upcoming year. And we're gonna be starting in August with our back to school special. And we'll have several of our guests 
that log on with us will be leaders in their teams, their parents and teachers coming on with us to tell us about some of the things that they have gathered from our real academy and um, just some other great things that they're doing to come on and, and provide that collaboration still uh, with our education community, because we have people that log on and I'll let Tammy talk about that part for our audience and our reach and, and how people find it beneficial. Yes, and one thing I, I think too, Shika, that is worth us mentioning, and um, I hope you can see the um, beauty in what I'm going to say, Dana, because it's one of those things, and Shika said that we're very, very proud of, because what we decided was we did not want to be a part of the problem, but we were going to yeah. be the solution. Like if, if there are problems out there and we see that there are problems because there are problems. Yeah. Are we going to just talk about what the problems are or are we going to be about solving them? And mm -hmm. that was what determination for us made our walk with these parents, with the leaders, with the teachers, and even with students, so um, powerful because when you are talking with people and you're acknowledging, like we're, we're not disputing that these problems exist because they do, but what can we do about them? Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? What's the answer to this particular situation that a parent is facing? And we really feel good about being able to have those kinds of interactions with our um, community, especially because we did um, the other thing that was very um, special about the collaborative when we were launching it and getting started, we had community partners who came in and supported what we were trying to do. And even those folks tuned in to make sure um, that they were supporting the efforts that we had as we were trying to extend our reach to the community to say, hey, we, we know that things are tough right now, but um, we believe that things are going to get better. Here are some things that we can do in the meanwhile. And it's been, um, again, as Shika said, a really um, awesome experience to have the collaborative as that platform where we can be there and do what we do as leaders and that's try to um, make education better. And I'll put the links in the show notes to that and um, people can tune in. Is it still 7 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays, first Tuesday of each month? That is okay. correct, Dana. And if they visit our website, um, you can click all of our social media handles there where it is um, can be accessed through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so each of you, uh, talk to me a little bit about your um, upcoming roles as well um, in the upcoming school year, the 22-23 school year. Shika, you mentioned you've been at the middle school level, you're moving to district, and Tammy was a district and now going to the middle school. So how are you um, anticipating these changes and uh, how are you gonna use uh, your background in this new role? Yes, um, so this this past year was my first year at the district level and I had been a, I was a teacher for five years. I was assistant principal for eight years at the middle level, principal for five years at the middle level. And this will be, this year is my second year as the director of secondary interventions for Chester County School District. So um, basically um, what I have done as far as growth, the growth model that my team and I devised for the middle level was something that my superintendent was interesting in, interested in making that happen more at the secondary level throughout the district. So um, that growth mindset, um, making sure that we have that instilled and just building our leaders capacities and our interventionist capacities for being able to make sure we can relate to our students and that our students are able to have the tools and resources that they need to experience success is um, my main focus along with that growth in literacy and math. 
And um, as you mentioned before, I did start my leadership journey at the district level. So I worked at the district level, um, kind of in a reciprocal uh, nature than what she could just describe. And so I started at the district and seven years ago, um, decided, you know, I kind of am done with mm -hmm. this aspect of leading. I thought it was time for me to go back to the bank. And so I was preparing to, because it was just the time for a change. And I knew I needed to do something different than um, what I was doing at the time, but just didn't really know what. So um, unbeknownst to me, I would land in a principalship at Great Falls Elementary School and which honestly was the very best career experience that has ever happened for me because that was exactly what was missing from what was happening um, in the other roles. And I love what I've done. I've had so, so many amazing experiences at the district level, but they've all been, um, as you said before, related to my background. Like I was doing business at the um, district level. But when I found myself in a school, it was a very different dynamic and that um, business benefited me. But now I was in the middle of a very different audience and I was responsible for not just projects and not just uh, reports, I was responsible for people. And it was absolutely the greatest challenge that I have ever faced, but the most rewarding of any of the jobs that I've ever had. And absolutely love, love, love doing what I do because being there for staff and students is honestly, I think um, my ministry. I am on assignment where I am and I truly do <laughs> believe that I'm there for that reason. So starting um, in the fall, is going to be, this is the best time of year. Now I say that when you interview me in May, I'll be saying that again. I'm so excited about the end of school. I, I just get so excited at the uh, beginning of school and at the end of school, just because again, school is just, it's a whole different energy. So I'm still new enough that it just so excites me to be able to get ready to go back. And um, so I'm always looking for, taking the school to the next level. And that's my goal for being there, making the school better, making sure that the school's better because I am the person who has led them these last past seven years. Um, and you mentioned before when you were talking um, uh, through our intro, our school is a school that's an improvement. So um, that happened while I was principal at the school. I was a brand new principal found out, as she had mentioned before, we are in comprehensive support and improvement. So we're now a CSI school. And I committed then to leading them out of that process. And so that is always at the forefront of what we're doing. So we're always revising, revisiting, and going back to what those goals are that will lead us and change our academic trajectory because that's really where we are. We're growing our kids to be um, not just, just very successful at their um, schoolwork, but trying to produce kids that are gonna leave that school prepared to be good people, ready for college, ready for a career, ready for the military, whatever. And again, I'm in an elementary school, so it sounds kind of foreign, but we have to start there. And that's one of the things that I've discovered as a principal leading a school that's in improvement. If we don't start here, then we end up where we are or were because we're not there anymore. We're well on our way to being a former school that was in improvement. And those are those kinds of um, mountains that we've had to climb in order to be where we are and for us to start where we're starting this year 
um, there, there's no other way to describe it except uh, just complete, complete and utter pleasure for kicking off a new school year and watching the pendulum as it moves over to this other side of where we're going and allowing for my kids and my um, staff to see the fruits of their labor and how hard work has um, truly paid off for us over these last few years. Yeah, it's great to hear the excitement in your voice as you prepare for the beginning of the school year. And oh, yeah. um, is that coming up in, um, in mid-August? Is that when you all start? Yes, actually, my um, I go back to um, what we both do. We have um, our leadership summit is next week for district and um, school leaders throughout our district. And then the following week, we have hours like my school does what we're going to do to welcome folks back in that next Monday. Teachers are back um, on the calendar for the start of the new year. And I think it's on the 15th. Yeah, mm -hmm. very similar in Colorado and our kids start on August 8th. So we are oh. doing a summit here as well in late July. So yeah, yeah no, it, it comes up and yeah, like you said, it's, it's that energy, it's seeing the kids, uh, whether you're welcoming back a lot of the same kids or, you know, having a lot of new kids come in, but it's just, yeah, just uh, pulling uh, the needle forward and, and continuing to improve. So it's really exciting to hear um, your passion and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit with both of you about uh, your books. So um, we'll, we'll emphasize the one, uh, women who lead in education. So I'll talk about the challenges women face as leaders um, and how it doesn't have to be lonely at the top. Definitely. Well, I will um, talk about our first book and then Tammy can talk about the one. Um, it doesn't have to be lonely at the top. So women who lead um, featuring school principals is something that we were invited to be a part of uh, by Dr. Sharon Porter. And we really just told, told our leadership stories. I really emphasize that aspect of being that instructional leader as the thing that really helped us move the academic needle at our school. And Tammy focused more on that cultural aspect and making sure things were in place to be able to shift that um, in her chapter of the book. But along with the book are several other phenomenal ladies in um, leadership that we were just really um, excited to, to be a part of and be alongside other women doing the work um, in education and in education leadership uh, because sometimes um, it's more of a male dominated uh, feel sometimes in leadership. So we were excited to be a part of the collaborative of that work and also uh, help other women on the journey of, of leadership, just to let other people see that, um, you know, things are, are possible in leadership. And sometimes from the aspect of um, the other responsibilities that you have as a woman, you know, there may be some challenges. So we're wanting to other people to see that, you know, there, this is possible for people to be in leadership and be successful um, in leadership. Along with the book, if you're uh, purchasing it from our website, also comes the professional development conference that went along with that, which is just hearing from all of the phenomenal ladies that are in that book with us. So it's great uh, information for any leader to be able to garner something for their leadership journey. Definitely. I think it was uh, it, uh, more even about the experience, Shika, wasn't it? Like, it, it was, was great to be a part of that camaraderie. And as Shika said, that cadre of women who are outstanding in what they do. And um, I'll just speak briefly about our second book, um, the book that uh, we are continuing to um, perfect. And we were prepared to release the book earlier and just couldn't seem to get that last part right. Like we, we just couldn't get it where we wanted it to be, to be published. And then we realized why um, the story is still being told and we are wrapping that up now. <laughs> 
to really um, speak to leaders who find themselves in that awkward place that we were in where you're facing a state sanctioned school improvement. Um, you have nobody to turn to. You don't know what to expect. You don't know what to do. There is no roadmap for navigating a process like um, school improvement, especially a sanctioned one. And so what we decided to do was to tell the story. And that's what um, it doesn't have to be lonely at the top is. It's our story that is um, actually started when we were assigned to the schools, just briefly about just becoming new principals, but then being new principals who found ourselves in priority status and CSI status with really nowhere to turn and no true support for working our way out of it. It was one of those things where the situation seemed abysmal, like this, there's no end in sight here. So we are providing a framework that explains how we navigated that process and how we were able to move our schools. As, as Sheikha said before, two and three report card levels in a single year by really holding true to those principles that are part of that framework that we have outlined. And there are several that are included within the book. Um, there's one for culture and it's three phases of culture as well as one for leadership and one for literacy. So there are built-in frameworks. And as Sheikha mentioned before, um, the PD for that book is different than the one that she mentioned with our um, Women Who Lead Summit. This is a um, different opportunity where schools can sign on for coaching from us in the area of improvement or work with their leadership teams. Um, but the, the story is one that is going to wrench your heart when you hear some of the things that we had to go to go through, but it's also going to be something that uplifts and encourages because when you see where we have gotten to, it's one of those things that you think, oh yeah, where's the framework? I, I, I wanna see this framework. So um, we're very, very proud of that work and excited that that's something that we will be able to share with leaders um, across the world because I think it's something that is very needed and can be very helpful. And do you have a release date for that? Honestly, it will what I think, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. You can tell us, I was gonna say, what I was gonna say is we haven't finalized it with our publisher, but there is a date that we are going to have it ready by. Okay. It should definitely be the end of September. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. great. Yeah, um, well, it's been a pleasure talking with both of you about your journey, um, you know, in uh, leading and uh, coming out of, um, you know, working in schools and turnaround status and now supporting other schools and communities. Uh, out of everything we talked about, if each of you could just tell me one thing you'd like listeners to remember. Sure. Thank you, Dana, for having us and um, allowing us to tell our stories. Um, one thing that I would like for um, listeners to remember is just that, um, you know, labels, and that's my, my big, that goes back to my why. Um, the reason that when we talked about at the beginning that it was so personal for us to come out of school improvement uh, was because we are from the community that we're we're working in. So for me, it was personal for people to understand that in a small rural area of Chester, South Carolina, where I'm from, a lot of times from surrounding areas that are more affluent, uh, great things are not expected from here. So what I wanted my children to know was that this does not define you. This report card grade level does not define you. Zip codes do not define you. And whatever you have that is within you, what, what you feel is possible, that your opportunities are limitless, 
no matter what your race is, no matter what your gender is, and no matter what you come from. So that is the, the main thing that I want people to remember in my work as a school leader, uh, in my work as a coach, um, just as my, in my work as a woman, you know, I want us to be able to see people not through our bias, but through possibilities of, of what we're giving people a chance to, to be able to do. I love that, Shika. And I love um, the fact that you frame it because I think it's perfect for my segue into what I would like people to um, just keep in mind as they hear what we've had to say today. And uh, Dana, as she could say, thank you so much for the opportunity to have this platform to be able to share our stories um, and the journey that we've been on as leaders. But if there's one thing that I'd like for folks to take away and just remember is that as leaders, please always know that you can rise above whatever um, situation you find yourself in if you are committed to being resilient. You, you just have to allow that resiliency to lead you through what you're going through. And no matter what that is, there is a way to escape. Like there is nothing so hard that you're not going to be able to get through it. It might look, um, monumental and it might look like there is no way out of this particular situation but resiliency is the key and if you lead with resiliency your staff will follow with resiliency and when your staff follows with resiliency that resiliency seeps down even into the classroom so that the children are resilient to what's going on around you and i said that fit very um, well into what Sheikha was saying, because even when the odds are stacked against you and nobody sees you coming out of the situation that you're in because of who you are and where you are and what people might think of you, it doesn't define what you are. That piece of paper that says you're unsatisfactory isn't who you are. That does not tell the true story of who's in this building. And that's one of the things that I think we should all always keep in mind. The people are not the rating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A test can't define us. Mm -hmm. And so when we lead, we lead people, not tests. We, we lead people, <laughs> children in teachers. And I think that having that resiliency to say, look, you know, it might, those darts might be bouncing off my back because people are saying and doing different things, but I'm shielding um, the staff and students from that because all they see from me is, and this was something that I think she could, um, she, she didn't share this today, but she said this was something that she always said to her kids, um, CMS, I see you, who do you see or what do you see or whatever. Um, that is the mindset that you want to get into your children. I see you for who you are. And that's who I want you to see when you look in the mirror. I, I don't, I didn't, we didn't publish the um, scores. We, 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 we did deal with them as a staff, but again, in only the conversation to say, this is where we are, but this isn't indicative of who you are. This, these are the ratings right now. This is what we're going to do to make this look differently. And when you have that level of resiliency, I think it changes the trajectory of what can happen in your school because of the mindset that shifts in the people that are there. So if, if you can bear anything in mind, just remember that to be resilient is going to benefit you as a leader, your staff, as well as your students. Yeah, those are great things to remember from both of you. Um, it's been great to hear your tidbits of wisdom and uh, just uh, that's the theme of the podcast, just how resiliency has helped educators thrive. So how can people connect with you and find you online? 
Thank you again, Dana. The, our website is www.createandeducate.solutions. And again, from there, you can connect to Create and Educate on Facebook. You can connect to the collaborative through YouTube. You can find me on Twitter at Sheikah Houston. And you can also find me on LinkedIn um, under Sheikah Houston as well. And all of our platform broadcasts from each of those um, social media handles that are all on our website. So um, you can email us from the website, you can fill out a form. If you are a leader who needs support or an educator, reach out to us because that is what we specialize in supporting leaders because we know how much we needed that support in educators. Well, it's been a pleasure having you both on the podcast today. Um, Tammy, do you have uh, any uh, social media handles you'd like to share? Um, so you can find me in those same spaces that you just heard from Chica. Uh, and I will do a better job of being on Twitter and LinkedIn when I finish my dissertation. I promise I, that that's my next goal. When I, <laughs> when I get finished that, I'm going to learn Twitter and I'm going to learn LinkedIn and to start being social out there. But Right now, if you need me, you can uh, find us on, um, there's a link tree on our um, webpage. And as Sheikha said, that's create and educate um, dot solutions. And we truly are trust mates. So if you find me, you're going to find Tammy too. We're, <laughs> we're in most spaces together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you can't find me, Sheikha will make sure that you get me. So, <laughs> it is fine. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, really, uh, I, I wish you well, Tammy, in finishing your dissertation. You. And, um, you know, I hope this episode will um, reach people that uh, need support in the area of turnaround yes. and just, uh, you know, how that your services can help those uh, this school year. Well, thank you so much for being on the Out of the Trenches podcast today. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Dana.